why now? Uh, 36 years old, obviously you mentioned a, a storied career. You've been doing this a long time. Why now do you call it a career? At this point, you know, family has become the main priority. Um, in order for me to be the best I can possibly be on the mountain, I need to ski a lot. I need to train a lot. That would require, you know, multiple trips where I'm gone for six plus weeks. And it's hard for me to do that at this point. It's, you know, I had two trips where, you know, they're six plus weeks away and I have seven month old twins and a three and a half year old. And it weighed on me, it weighed on, you know, the family, it weighed on them, like hearing my three-year-old's voice and saying, when are you coming home, daddy? Or like him being mad at me over Skype, uh, over FaceTime or whatever was, uh, was hard. And, you know, I didn't feel like I could do either to the parenting or the skiing to the level that I wanted to do it. And it was just time to, to take that next step. And, um, you know, not the year that I would necessarily want to do it, but when it's time, it's time. And obviously you mentioned injuries a little bit. Did that play into it a little bit? I'm 36 year old, years old. Um, my body's taken a beating over all these years. Um, I was really hoping to like walk away from it feeling relatively healthy. Unfortunately, um, the body fell apart a week prematurely. Um, but that's like, that's part of it. I mean, I skiing as many time as many years as I have at the world cup level is definitely taking its toll on my body. I'm, I'm about like an inch and a half shorter now than I was when I was 19. I first <laughs> entered the world cup, just like the years of the pressure of a ski turn at the highest level. And, you know, my back's been compressed so much. So I knew I didn't have many runs in the volume that I needed to, to really compete at the level I wanted to. And before this year, the goal was to try to go through the Olympics. Um, but for me, like it, where I am in my life and career, I didn't want to go to the Olympics just as a, as a tourist, just to go there to do it. I wanted to go to be able to compete for a medal. And I couldn't square that with the family and, and sacrificing all that stuff. So it was, it was time to be done and I'm, I'm happy to be able to move on to the next step and spend time with the family, work on my company shred. Um, I have a bunch of stuff going on with a bunch of my other sponsors and I'm um, trying to do some cool constant content stuff as well. So i um, excited for that next step. It's going to be scary, but, uh, you know, it's, it'll be fun as well. What do you look back and see as your, uh, your personal greatest achievement in skiing? It's always hard to like, look back and say, this is like my one favorite moment. Um, I think world championships in 2013, where I won three gold medals was definitely the highlight week of my career to be able to do that. As a little kid, I never wanted to be just a specialist. Of course, the bulk of my success came in giant slalom. But to be able to be on the podium in every discipline on the World Cup, to be able to win three world championship medals in different disciplines, um, you know, that was a childhood dream. I always looked up to guys like Lasse Schuss and JT Andre Almont, guys who could win in every discipline and try to be like them. And to be able to come close to that was, was really cool. So I'm really proud of that. And, you know, to be on the World Cup for this long is, is, is a lot of fun. It's a dream come true. It was a teenager who is getting my butt kicked by like 10 seconds in races and not anywhere close to being the best kid, even on the Park City ski team to have the career that I ended up having was, uh, is pretty surreal and beyond my wildest expectations. I mean, you've kind of been everywhere, whether it be the Olympics or, uh, you know, world cup or world championship is it, was there an event or a certain, um, a certain event that you looked forward to the most, maybe not was your, your greatest achievement, but you really wanted to be there. That was the one that you, was kind of the bread and butter each year or every four years in some cases? I think mean, having world championships in Beaver Creek in 2015 um, was a highlight. To be able to have the world championships in the United States was a huge thing in my career. And to be able to actually come away and, and win that world championships, that was like the most intense emotional response I've ever had to a race actually because I was coming from behind and it meant so much to be able to win in front of friends and family. You know, and as an American traveling in the World Cup, we spend six months out of the year living in our duffel bags over in Europe. And to be able to have, you know, friends and family there and the home crowd and take the Europeans off their home soil and make them live out of a duffel bag for a few weeks always felt good. And to be able to win on that slope, um, especially it's been a slope that it had a lot of success on. So um, that was a huge, huge deal um, and a lot of fun. So that was like 
one of the highlights and, and a race I really look forward to, to having on home soil. You and I are both uh, sitting here talking in the state of Utah, and obviously you grew up here. So what was your your childhood like growing up skiing in Utah, and how did that ultimately push you to, to be a pro, I mean, to, to make that your career? I'm so lucky to have grown up in Park City. I couldn't have done what I've done without the environment I grew up in. Um, growing up in Park City, we had the World Cup every year, so I grew up watching the best skiers in the world every Thanksgiving weekend. Um, that was a huge inspiration, being able to go slip the course eventually as I got older, forerun. Um, just being able to see the best guys in the world was a huge inspiration. And then also helped me because a week later we were training on a world-class hill. A bunch of my friends growing up were all ski racers too. So like we had a cool group of friends that had a lot of camaraderie, super competitive. It really pushed us. And growing up in the mountains in Utah, I mean, you couldn't ask for a better playground to be on the snow. It's you know, whether we're training in the gates, but, you know, we spent a ton of time free skiing, powder skiing, ripping around the whole mountain. I credit like my style of skiing to the free skiing I did as, as a kid. Um, you know, whether we we're just bombing down the mount mogul runs or hitting jumps or free skiing powder or having contests on who could lay it over the furthest. You know, skiing here in Utah is what really developed my skiing to what it is to, to this day. And the environment of Park City is the perfect environment. Um, it's a town that really supports its its athletics. You know, not only am I an Olympic gold medalist from Park City, but you know, in the years later, you know, you had Sage Consenberg in snowboarding and Josh Christensen in, in slope style. Um, so there's just there's like such an awesome athletic culture here. A um, bunch of my teammates from Park City ski team ended up being on the U.S. ski team with me. So you know, we have just such a cool community here you couldn't have asked for a better playground to grow up as a kid. How does, the, I mean, growing up here and obviously skiing here, you mentioned the terrain, you mentioned the, everything you're able to do, whether it be free riding and free skiing versus uh, practicing for GS and other stuff, but skiing here in Utah compared to some of the other great places you've skied. I mean, how do you compare and contrast coming home to Park City and getting on the slopes versus being across the world somewhere else that is, uh, that is lined up for a big event? Yeah, I've been lucky enough to ski everywhere in the world. I mean, there's few places. There's only Antarctica, I guess, I'm missing really on my uh, continent that I've skied on. So, you know, I always, I'm of course biased. Being a home, home, homegrown Utah boy, I think Utah skiing is the best in the world. I mean, there's bigger mountains in the world, whether it's the Alps or whatever, but the snow, the terrain, the consistency of Utah is amazing. Um, What's so good, especially like from the high high level athletics point, is like I can get in and out of my home for thirty minutes to the airport, and you know, off to the next next race in the world, and all those like pieces are so important. And you know, coming back home and free skiing back in Deer Valley in the spring is always like so much fun. After a year year on the World Cup tour, trying to get those powder days in, um, you know, free skiing in the spring, it's it's always been fun. So. You know, really lucky to have this environment. I, I, I couldn't be where I am today without it. That's for sure. So Deer Valley is your home mountain, right? Exactly. How, uh, <laughs> from now, uh, now that you're retired, right? And you're a family yeah. man and you got to dedicate <laughs> some time to the kids and the wife. How often do you anticipate getting out to ski at Deer Valley? I haven't skiing a bunch. I mean, right now with, with my back, I need to get that strong in, but um, my son, or Jack's my son, he's three and a half. He goes to the Deer Valley Academy there. So he goes skiing a couple days a week. And it's been so much fun this winter in between races, going out and skiing with him. His like evolution from like the beginning of the year being pretty timid on skis to now like only wanting to ski in the trees, charging, trying to hit every little bump on the side of the hill is, is so much fun. It's, uh, it's like such a joy to go out there skiing with him. Um, my twins, they're seven months old. So they're a couple of years away from being, you know, really out there, but, you know, skiing with the family is fun. It's, uh, it's so much, that's what I love about skiing is it's a family sport. Like I can go ski with my, like my parents who are in their seventies and Jack's who's three years old and we can all go skiing together and have an awesome day. So, you know, that's, that's what's awesome is to be able to get out there. Um, you know, I'll definitely be out there a few days a week for the rest of my life. And that's, that's the, that's the goal, at least. So, um, you know, lucky to be in a place like this. Hey, how much has the landscape of professional skiing changed over the course of your career? 
Um, I mean, is there a way that you feel like the sport has either grown or has tapered off for some? How do you categorize how it's kind of ebbed and flowed over the last two decades? Within the sport of ski racing, there's always little changes, whether it's equipment or course setting or whatever it is. So there's been a lot of little evolutions over the years. Um, I feel lucky that I grew up, you know, or came ski racing in this like golden age of, you know, Bodie Miller and Lindsey Vaughn and now Michaela Schifrin and, you know, hopefully passing the torch on to guys like Ryan Cochran Siegel and Tommy Ford. And it's, uh, it's been really fun. I mean, we're always the away team on the World Cup. So it's been cool to see that evolution. Um, and, you know, having people like Lindsay or Bodie who were larger than life stars really help bring the sport to more Americans. In Switzerland or Austria, it's basically the number one sport, you know. Um, so to have, like, bring a little bit of that popularity to the U.S. is, is fun. That's why I think World Championships in Beaver Creek was so cool because we did have a huge crowd there. It was an electric atmosphere that had that almost European feel to it. So obviously we're never going to be the NBA, but, uh, you know, doing whatever we can to help grow the sport and help inspire, you know, kids to go out there and ski is, is really fun. And, and hopefully I was part of that. Hopefully I made that next generation, those younger kids think to skiing and ski racing specifically is something that was cool and fun and something they wanted to pursue. You mentioned Michaela Schifrin, who has had a pretty monumental week uh, in terms of a number. Uh, when you see her ski, uh, what comes to mind? She's just so solid. I mean, she has all the basic fundamentals down pat. Um, you know, there's there's no, like, mistakes in her skiing. It's it's very, like, methodical and, and very, like, precise. Um, and she's just, like, just hammers. I mean, it's, it's amazing to watch. She has the ability to, you know, win over a hundred World Cups, which is crazy to think about. She's at 60 something now, but, you know, she could blow that record out of the water um, and be, you know, far and away the greatest ever. So it's, uh, it's amazing to watch what she's done um, from, you know, as a young teenager winning World Cups to, to now coming to her own and being able to win in, in downhill and Super G as well is, uh, is pretty phenomenal. So it's, uh, you know, I feel bad for any of those girls racing against her because that's a, that's a tough fight. I know you have shred, but uh, what else is next for you uh, in terms of uh, some of the other things you, you hope to be doing? Yeah, so my company shred is definitely something I'll be working on more intensively. Um, you know, I have a relationship still with Deer Valley and a couple of my other sponsors. So um, doing some work with them, um, doing some content stuff with GoPro, um, just, yeah, various things like that. So, you know, I'll, I'll start to figure it out as more as uh, I go on. I mean, it's a little bit of a, a chill time right now, but uh, yeah, I'm sure I'll get busy quickly. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, I just say thank you to everybody who's watched and supported my career. Um, I've been so lucky to have so many amazing fans, but also so many amazing coaches and teammates and, you know, amazing wife, amazing kids, parents, brother, you know, friends. It's a, uh, I'd sit here for half an hour and thank people, but, uh, you know, having the support I've had over the years, it's really made it way more enjoyable, but it wouldn't have been possible without them. So, you know, just thank you to all those people that helped along the way. And, and if you ever cheered for me, that was important too. You know, we couldn't do what we could, um, without the fans out there. So thank you guys.